Copper deficiency. What is copper deficiency? In addition to being used to cover pipes, copper is also a metal that helps the body perform various functions. It can be found in small amounts in the human body. There are over a dozen enzymes in the body that are known to function as cuproenzymes. These are all dependent on copper for their function. For instance, a certain type of enzyme known as a tyrosinase makes melanin, which is a compound found in the skin cells. Doctors call a copper deficiency in the blood hypocupremia. According to the British Medical Journal, the condition is often underdiagnosed. What are the symptoms? Since the symptoms are similar to those of other conditions, such as vitamin B12 deficiency, diagnosing copper deficiency can be challenging. Low copper levels can affect a person's immune system and energy levels. Examples include Always feeling cold Easy bone breakage Easy bruising Fatigue Getting sick easily or frequently Pale skin Poor growth Skin inflammation Unexplained muscle soreness Skin sores Very low copper levels can cause problems with muscle movement as well. Common causes The body mainly absorbs copper from the stomach and small intestine. Having problems with either of these organs can affect a person's ability to absorb copper. Many times, copper deficiency is the result of stomach surgery that can affect absorption. Zinc supplementation is also a common cause of the copper deficiency. This is because zinc and copper compete for absorption in the stomach, with zinc being the usual winner. As a result, copper isn't absorbed. Copper deficiency in hair. Without copper, the body can't properly produce melanin, which is a pigment that gives people their hair their characteristic color. Low copper levels can lead to premature graying hair, which is why some doctors believe that people with low copper levels might develop this condition. However, the links between copper and hair color changes and hair loss haven't been widely studied. A 2013 study found no connection between blood copper levels and alopecia areata, a condition that causes hair loss. Zinc, another trace metal, has been linked with potentially leading to hair loss. How it's diagnosed A doctor can diagnose copper deficiency by asking a person about their health history and taking into account their symptoms. They may also consider other risk factors such as taking supplements or medications. These include Excess zinc supplementation History of bariatric surgery, such as gastric bypass History of gastrectomy, surgical removal of a part or all of the stomach History of upper gastrointestinal surgery Malabsorption syndromes, such as celiac or inflammatory bowel disease, where a person may not fully absorb all the nutrients in their food. A blood test is also sometimes performed to check a person's copper levels. However, this test isn't a definitive diagnosis because other factors can raise a person's copper levels. Usually, doctors consider a person's copper levels to be severely low if they're less than 30% of their expected range. Treatment Options if a person's copper levels are low due to their health condition, then treatment might be different. For instance, if they're taking too much zinc, they might need to reduce their zinc supplements. Although copper supplements are not always an ideal treatment, doctors often recommend them. Some of the most common types of copper supplements are copper chloride, copper sulfate, and copper gluconate. Although taking about 2 mg of copper daily may help, your doctor will advise you on the appropriate dosage. Other ways to boost a person's copper levels include eating more copper-rich food. If a person's copper levels are severely low and their doctor believes that they might not be able to absorb copper supplements, then they might prescribe intravenous copper treatment. According to the British Medical Journal, correction of copper deficiency can take anywhere from 4 to 12 weeks. Copper-rich foods. The recommended daily intake of copper is around 0.9 mg. Most people consume more copper in their daily diets. One of the most common sources of copper is cereals and bread. The best food sources of copper include Oysters, 6 medium, cooked, 2,397 micrograms, McGee Crab meat, 3 ounces, Alaskan king, 1,005 micrograms Cashew nuts, 1 ounce, raw, 622 micrograms Sunflower seeds, 1 ounce, dry roasted, 519 micrograms Whole grain bread and pasta, broccoli, potatoes, and bananas are also high in copper. Possible complications 
The most common complications of copper deficiencies are anemia, pancytopenia, and ataxia. Anemia is a condition where a person's red blood cells are low. This affects the amount of oxygen delivered to organs and tissues. Pancytopenia is a condition where all three major cellular parts of the blood are low. These include red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelet counts. This condition can affect the body's immune system and overall health. Ataxia is the loss of control of body movements. This occurs with low copper levels because a person's nervous system is affected. Other less common complications of low copper levels include the loss of pigment in the skin and hair. What's the outlook? It's a rare condition, and it can occur even in people who have had stomach surgery, such as those who have had gastric bypass. Fortunately, copper deficiency can be treated through diet and copper supplements. If you are worried that your copper levels are low, talk to your doctor about treatment options. Usually, a person's levels can be restored in a couple of weeks.